Now, India reported less than 10,000 new cases of coronavirus. This is for the third time this month as 9,309 new infections were reported in the last 24 hours. Also, for the sixth time in the month, there were less than 100 daily fatalities with 87 fresh COVID-related deaths, which takes the total number of deaths due to coronavirus to 1,55,000. 447. Well, now if we talk about the vaccine drive, uh, it taking place in India. India has crossed 7.5 million mark in its vaccination drive against the pandemic. According to the health ministry's website, a total of uh, 75 lakh 5,010 beneficiaries have been vaccinated against COVID till now. And the vaccination drive began on January 16th is the largest globally. And uh, India, according to the ministry, has been the fastest between the 1 million to the 7 million vaccination marks in the world. In fact, over this weekend, the second vaccination dose will be given to many of the beneficiaries. But if we take a look now at the vaccines per 100 of the population, we're behind other countries. Currently, it's the UAE that, that has vaccinated 1.62 per 100, uh, followed by Israel with 1.23. It's then followed by Chile, UK and the US. And India is actually 23rd on this list with 0 0.03 vaccinated per 100 of the population. Now, if we talk about the vaccine drive so far, our vaccine drive is still in its first phase. Earlier this week, the center uh, issued a series of deadlines for the vaccination of health workers and frontline workers to all the states. The government said that by the 20th of this month, the first dose should be administered to all healthcare workers. The mop up rounds for those left out should be finished by the 24th. And when it comes to the frontline workers, remember their vaccinations have begun as well. For frontline workers, the center has asked states to finish the first dose of vaccines by the 1st of March and then a mop up round about by till the 6th of March. Now, the government has said those who don't come forward during this period of from the health, uh, from the healthcare workers and frontline workers, they will then have to wait for their turn in the age-wise phases of the vaccination. So from March onwards, the government wants to start vaccinating people over 50 years of age. The details of this is still being worked out. So the big question is, even though our vaccination drive is moving faster when we talk about, you know, reaching the per million mark uh, and we're seven and a half million. In terms of the total number of vaccinations, we're still uh, behind what we had aimed for. We had thought in the first phase we would vaccinate three crore people. So how do we speed things up? We're now joined by Dr. K.R. Balakrishnan, Chairman and Director of Cardiac Sciences and Director of the Heart and Lung Transplant Program at MGM Healthcare and Dr. Rajiv Gupta, Director of Internal Medicine, uh, Max Healthcare, Shalimar Bagh. Thank you so much, doctors, uh, for joining us on the show. Uh, first you, uh, Dr. Balakrishnan, uh, you know, so far, even though we've reached those million, you know, marks very, very fast, we're still lagging behind in terms of what we had envisioned as, you know, the first phase, three crore people to be vaccinated. Uh, what, what are the obstacles you're seeing? Why, why aren't we, you know, managing to vaccinate more and more people? One is, uh, I think there is some kind of um, reluctance on the part of people regarding the safety of these vaccinations. Uh, so uh, everyone is afraid that in case of an untoward event, uh, they don't want to be the one to get it. So I think we have to, it, it, at least in our own hospital and city, a uh, lot of the um, leading physicians have led by example. In our hospital, all the healthcare workers to a large extent have been vaccinated. And the fact that there's not been any uh, demonstrable or significant untoward incident that has improved the confidence level considerably. So I expect over a period of the next few weeks, the acceptance level of these vaccines will go up considerably. All right. And uh, Dr. Gupta, uh, do you feel this va and this vaccine hesitancy? How can we overcome it? Also, uh, you know, the issue of um, uh, when we start the next phase of the vaccines, uh, we're told that the prime minister and many of the political leaders themselves will also get vaccinated. So that should be something that should increase uh, people's confidence in the vaccines. I, I fully agree. See, once the frontline workers, which has been coming up for the vaccinations, and they are getting vaccinated, and people see that uh, there are not much reactions except just a fever or maybe a uh, local side of pain, which is the only thing which may persist for a couple of days or so. Otherwise, no other complication has been noted. In our hospital also, there are a lot of doctors who have been vaccinated. No complication has been noted so far and nobody has been admitted so far up to the vaccinations. It is only the fear in the mind of people that 
they are not going to get vaccinated first. I think this is a blessing in disguise. They know that uh, the, the frontline workers are getting vaccinated, so they have a fair idea that nothing happens with the vaccines. So they should go with the vaccines. And I think in coming times, they are going to be vaccinated as fast as possible and more in numbers. As right, and talking about this more the in numbers, there's a need to increase our vaccine centers. You know, uh, one hand, we've been talking about uh, people's hesitancy and, you know, changing mindset. But now we also need to increase our logistics because once we open it up in March, we're going to need cold storage, uh, you know, the whole cold chain unit uh, to work better. We're going to need to create awareness in rural parts of the country. And, uh, you know, uh, people have been talking about a public-private partnership, how it should be used uh, to increase the vaccines, uh, vaccinations. Uh, Dr. Balakrishna? Yeah, I think so. The whole exercise of reaching vaccines to all the segments of society uh, is actually a logistics uh, challenge. And uh, you, you, in the beginning of the program, you mentioned the number per million population of various countries and India stands 23rd. You also have to understand that we have so many more, we have 1.3 billion people. So it's a it, logistically speaking, it's really a tremendous effort, and I think we have to congratulate the, all the people involved in this program that we have reached large numbers. And uh, a lot of India is rural. Uh, to reach all those areas is not easy. But I'm sure that with more effort and with more cooperation, that, that, that's going to happen. Uh, and it's just a matter of time. All right. We're still waiting to find out, you know, the details of the vaccine driver, you know, march forward and, and what age groups and, of, of course, the registrations as well. Uh, Dr. Gupta, there have also been cases of people getting the disease after they got vaccinated, uh, after they received the first dose of the vaccine. So for our viewers, if you could explain this, because you're not fully protected till you get that second dose, isn't it? That's that's absolutely right. So once you get a first dose, there are not enough antibodies for, I think, few days or maybe up to a month or so, and that period that you can get infected. So it is not because of the vaccine, but this is because of the infections only that the people are getting infected by the coronavirus, not because of the vaccines. But I feel in coming time, in coming few months or so, uh, there will be large scale vaccinations all over India. And uh, I must uh, thank to the government that so fast the govern Indian government has taken these steps to vaccinate uh, their population to prevent uh, such a deadly disease which everybody is, has been scared of for last almost a year or so. So I feel uh, vaccination is must. The, however, I have seen after vaccinations, not even a single case in our area has come up that they have got, you know, corona or the COVID or any other complications associated with it. So I feel this is a little uh, fallacious uh, statement that, uh, uh, that the people are going to get uh, corona after taking vaccinations. Uh, I think probably this is absolutely safe and uh, we should go ahead and uh, educate people and talk to people on mass, mass levels so that they can come forward and get vaccinated, especially, right. specifically those who are in the older age group. Right. And Dr. Balakrishnan, another uh, you know concern is that India's numbers are coming down. And that's great news, of course, that, you know, every today also our numbers are below uh, 10,000 in the last 24 hours. But on the flip side, people are feeling more confident about, uh, you know, how we've overcome this disease. And, they're, you know, they're asking, why do we need to get vaccinated then? So this is another thing that we have to counter because there are variants. There are still a lot of risks uh, from coronavirus. I, I think you raise an important point in in a lot of our cities, especially ours. The feeling is that we are through this and everyone is back to normal. Increasingly, I find that people are even dispensing with masks. There are a lot of crowding. Buses have opened. I think uh, shopping malls have opened. So there is a feeling that the worst is over. So vac vaccine may or may not be necessary. But I'm not sure that's necessarily a good policy or a good uh, way of thinking. And vaccine should, should, should be done so that once for all, the scourge of this virus is eliminated from our society. Absolutely. That's something that needs to be emphasized to the public that they must take the vaccine, you know, when their time comes. Thank you so much, doctors, for joining us uh, on the show today and sharing uh, your thoughts and, you know, uh, your advice on, in terms of how we can increase uh, the, the numbers of vaccines and the vaccination drive, how we can quicken it. And uh, talking about numbers going up in Maharashtra, the COVID tally has swelled to 20.52 lakh, while 3,297 new cases, 25 deaths were reported. Now, the state reported more than 3,200 new 
new coronavirus cases for a second day this week. So it's a sudden spike in COVID cases in Mumbai and uh, cases, new cases crossed 500 for the third time in Mumbai in February. So the big question many are asking is whether the resumption of the local train services for the common public has led to the rise in the number of cases in the city. Uh, some experts have said that the first fortnight since the resumption of local train services will be critical to analyze this link as of course there is no sort of social distancing on the Mumbai locals. Welcome back. It's time now for a viewer question segment on the show and Dr. Rajiv Gupta is with us to take all those questions. Let's listen into the first one. Hi, my name is Shashwa Chaturvedi and uh, my question is, recently we've heard about the news of cinema halls reopening for the audience to join in again in India. But uh, I wanted to know, is it advisable for us to be taking such a step or should we wait uh, for a longer time before we go back to theatres and watch our favourite movies? <laughs> Dr. Gupta? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the question is very valid. Nowadays, the cinema halls are open and uh, people are going and watching movies out there and for the entertainment which they have been you know lacking for last almost a year or so so what i feel uh, for how long uh, these public places can be closed is it a, a maybe a two years maybe three years i think probably over the period of time we have seen that the cases of the covid has gone down drastically and if you see in delhi it's almost only 100 or 110 cases every day or so sometimes 90 cases also and almost no fatalities and uh, due to these reasons and because of the other reasons like uh, the business has uh, to grow up over the period of time also for which the people you know have been uh, uh, crying about that uh, the earnings have gone down so the business and the protection i would say uh, right. the cinema halls have been uh, opened up uh, and the government has taken decision after thinking that the covid cases have gone down drastically for last couple of months or so so i think that's fair enough uh, for how long you can uh, keep it closed all right so basically be uh, so careful that's, that's and uh, safe. you feel the situation yeah, be is careful. under better control yes yes okay let's yes, just listen yes, into yes. the next question very, very my name is Ardil and i am from delhi my question is, we keep hearing different variants in other countries, so do we have variants here in India? Although he's asking about the in coronavirus India, variants that we keep hearing about. Yes, yes, yes. we keep hearing about the Brazil uh, variant or the South African variants. However, we have seen a very, very few cases of maybe 20 or 30 cases in last uh, few months, but not much cases here have been reported. So I don't think so that we have to worry about it. Moreover, the vaccinations which has come in, it uh, really gives protection against the variant also. So I don't think so that we need to worry about the variant at this moment once the COVID uh, has been almost at the declining at the verge of going away. All right, uh, Dr. Gupta, thank you so much uh, for joining us here on NDTV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, now talking about the numbers going down, the World Health Organization praised India for its coronavirus effort to contain the spread. WHO India representative said India should be very, very proud of itself given its population and how the numbers have gone down. For over three months now, cases have been consistently going down. Considering the magnitude of the population, 1.3 billion, 37 states and union territories, 770 districts, just multiply what I said in terms of key public health actions into that. And so that is something the government of India has to be very, very proud of. And bringing that uh, diligence, discipline, and vigor into the response to a vaccination campaign. So that's another area of response.